Hello and welcome to this very special interview edition of the Irish Wrestling Podcast on behalf of Bodyslam.net. My name is Mark O'Brien. I'm joined today by the one and the only, the host of the Gabby AF Podcast, one and only Gabby Lispisa. Gabby, thank you very much for joining us. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for having me. How are you doing? I'm absolutely wonderful. All the better for having you on. Listen, um, a lot of our Irish wrestling fans may not be as involved in the Irish wrestling space or wrestling space in general as I am. Maybe give, uh, could you give Irish wrestling fans a bit more on your background and how your kind of rise to prominence has come about the last year or two? Sure. So um, I was for five years, the producer for the Sirius XM uh, pro wrestling show called Busted Open. I don't know if you are mm-hmm. you know, familiar with it or not, but it does reach internationally. So I'm sure some of you guys know about it. Um, so I kind of became a little bit of a voice on the show. I produced that show with Dave LaGreca, who's the lead host. You've got Mark Henry, Bully Ray, Tommy Dreamer, a bunch of like really good other great analysts with that. Um, unfortunately, Sirius XM, the company had uh, massive layoffs last year and due to budget cuts I was laid off and it was like, like the most heartbreaking time of my life I will say it was terrible but you know I knew nothing about wrestling I got that job and then I fell in love with it and just through my connections and stuff I was like I'm gonna take a little bit of a bet on myself and start my own podcast um, which I did which is Gabby AF so um, that launched in October and within the first week it would debut at like number five in the country of the United States so if you guys aren't familiar with it um I hope you would like to be after this uh, interview. I interview a bunch of big name guests, Cody Rhodes. I've had Ric Flair, Bailey, Eddie Kingston. Um, I actually just had an Irish wrestler, Adam Max did, who was on Love Island, which you Mm -hmm. guys are definitely familiar with. He's a friend. Um, Definitely listen to that interview. I think it was highly underrated because I don't think a lot of my viewers watch that show, Mm -hmm. but Adam is amazingly awesome. I just had Joe Hendry on as well right before. Mm -hmm is NXT debut. So a few people I think you guys would love to hear. And, you know, I'm a newer fan. My perspective's a little bit different because I did just start watching when I got my job, which is now six years ago, but I love it so much. I respect it so much. And I just have a good time talking about it. So hopefully you want to listen after. uh, Hopefully I sold myself good enough. I feel like we sell very well. Oh, you sold yourself brilliantly. Like I listen, a lot of us different walks of life have all kind of experienced being laid off and whatnot. But I often personally find that like on the far side of kind of difficult things, something great comes out. So at the end of October, you put out a really cool tweet saying it's my turn now. And then when the AF launched the Premier Streaming Network, a lot of us were wondering, sorry, why were you a producer in the first place? As in, you you come across incredibly authentically, quite outspoken, um, which is very unique in the space. Because a lot of people try to play a game a bit, particularly in the podcast space. They try to yeah. play to one or two audiences, but you keep things very fresh, very simple. Um, what would be your approach, I suppose, to podcasting and interviewing? Because you've, you've stolen my thunder listing of about uh, several of the guests you've had on that I've really enjoyed so far. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for me, I've always wanted to keep it conversational. That's like my goal when I have anybody on. Um, I started having out people that I was friendly with um, just to kind of get kind of warmer with how I wanted to ask these questions and stuff, but I don't want it to be like question and answer, question and answer, because I don't think that that's fun to listen to as a viewer. Um, Of course, you could have somebody on who has a huge match and just talk about the match and that's what they're going to give. But I think getting to know these people on like almost a deeper level of like why they're doing this, like kind of what they go home to and struggles that they deal with as like, human beings because I think pro wrestling is so interesting because you can love or hate somebody that you see on TV and it's because it's entertainment, right? They're playing a heel or they're yeah. a baby face, but they're human beings that go home and this is their job. So it's like, yeah. there's so much more to them. And this is such a hard business that that that's what I want. When you listen, it's like, Oh, two friends catching up or two people just chatting. Like that's how I kind of approach anytime I talk to anybody. And that, that's hundred percent. And like, particularly I, I listened recently to your Eddie Kingston interview um yeah, oh I, I felt like that, that as, as an Irish person I find I used to live in New York the kind of Irish humor in New York kind of New Jersey kind of humor there's yeah. a lot of overlap like people might like to wind each other up or give each other shit as you guys were doing um Irish wrestling fans I think across the world would absolutely love it what was that like interviewing Eddie and I suppose like you're relatively new to the podcasting game you're launched a new show and this one guy is trying to try his best to give you as much shit as possible and kind of pop you do whatever he can to get you going I mean, I love it. I kind of expected it from Eddie because I did have a friendship with him before bringing him on. I did have the pleasure of meeting him at AEW and stuff like that. So I kind of knew what I was getting myself into with him. But funny about Eddie is like the minute we met each other, um, 
I was like loud and I, I think I dropped like an F-bomb or something. And he legitimately turned around and he was like, who are you? And I was like, who are you? And like, that's yeah. how we started talking. And he was like, oh God, like you remind me of home. Like, that's just who you remind me of. And like, I think that's why we just clicked as friends because, you know, I, New York, New Jersey, you just yeah, yeah. kind of know, I'm sure it's the same where you're mm -hmm. from. Like if you hear someone with the same kind of twang or that accent or that kind of language, like you just kind of know you're going to get along with them. So I, I thought when we stopped that interview, I was like, nobody's going to like this. This is absurd. Like we just yelled at each other for almost an hour. He just yeah, yeah. burned me trying to get me angry because he knows it would be funny. And like, I will say that episode, I probably get the most comments and compliments to this day. They want Eddie on like once a month. They want us to be on a sitcom together. Mm. And like, it's just hilarious. So That's not a, you used to do a sitcom wouldn't be a bad idea, but like, I think <laughs> on top of like him making you angry, the main thing that kind of stands out is how authentic the pair of you are. And that's probably the big thing. When I watch Eddie Kingston, I'm thinking like, all right, well, he's Eddie yeah. all the time. He's not trying to play anything or be something he's Never. not. Um, and I think in the wrestling space, like obviously on camera, people do that a lot, but even like on the podcasting space, um, it can be quite, I think, kind of a superficial kind of environment. So 100%. I think that's why the Gabby AF's obviously taken off and done unbelievably well so far. I was going to touch on, like, how did you get in contact with Adam Maxted? So Adam, obviously, he's an Irish wrestling fan over here. He's huge with OTT. Like, yeah. a lot of our female cohort, female population would love Love Island. Like, that's, thankfully, I'm, I'm not forced to watch that anymore, uh, as it would have been in previous relationships. But how right. did you get in contact with Adam and Flex Maxted? So I think what had happened was we had been, you know, when you're just like Instagram kind of friends with somebody because okay. you like at each other, you're in the same space and it just kind of happens. Like, yeah, yeah. I feel like especially in the beginning from how long I was working with Busted Open, mm. um, a lot of the times when I was either guest booking or producing or stuff and I'm adding these people and I'm, yeah. I'm becoming a bigger name in what I'm doing, people just follow you or you follow them. And we just had... A friendly like banter kind of about things i mm. think it was when he was actually with nxt i don't remember how long ago that was but yeah. i don't remember what it was about but super innocent friendly banter and then um that was kind of where it was um you know when you have those i, I don't know how to like explain it without yeah, yeah, yeah. You have those people on instagram like you like each other's stuff and you like kind of keep yeah. up just because it's like a yeah, mutual yeah. respect and then i just remember one of my best friends who's obsessed with Love Island because it's Love Island. It's not Love Island USA because there's more okay. than one. So is that is that um, is that taking off? Is that going well? Love Island USA is that really a thing? Is it? Um, I I don't watch I don't okay. watch any of the Love Islands, which is bad. But um, my friends that watch it say USA mm. is the worst one and that like Oof. UK is the best. I think yeah yeah. So and then he was on he was on Love Island and then he they just rebrought him back to Love yeah. Island All Stars. So my best friend like texted me and she was like oh my God, there's a wrestler on Love Island All-Stars. You have to talk to him. And I was like, oh, and like, I, then I go on my social media and he was posting about it. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh yeah, I follow him. Let me just like reach out and see if he wants to come on. Like that would be a cool crossover. When I tell you all my girlfriends that watch Love Island were like so excited. They're like, we can't wait to listen. You have to ask him this, this, and this because like I didn't watch the show. Yeah, so yeah. I kind of had to get a little bit of like a breakdown because as much as I wanted to talk to him about wrestling, like he was coming off of a huge show that has millions of followers. So I did have to talk about it as well. Yeah, yeah um and he's just such a sweet good human being like I cannot say enough nice yeah. things about him yeah. he is advocating for like men's mental health and he talks yep. so well and um I was literally just talking to Joe Hendry about him as well it sounds like I'm doing like an ad for Adam but like I was just talking to Joe about him as well because mm. they used to tag together which is hilarious yeah. mm -hmm. um but yeah, so it's just like funny how sometimes you're like, oh, this is happening for these people. And like, oh, we're friends or we follow each other. Like, let me just see. And he was like, yeah, I'll come on, like for sure. And that's why I think you always have to be nice and like respectful to anybody at any time. Because you never know when you're going to be like beneficial to each other in a certain yeah. kind of way. And I've always said that, like, be as nice to the janitor as you are to the CEO, because, you know, you don't know what's in anybody's future. And it's just good to keep those connections with everybody all the time. Yeah, like it's great. not hard to be kind to people. It's actually more difficult to be a dickhead to somebody as well. So, but like, yes. it's funny, like we were talking, talking about Love Island USA. I was chatting to somebody recently about this. Like they're they're obviously obsessed with all different islands across the world. If there's a Northeast Love Island in America, I might watch it. Like it's a, it's a bit di different cultures and different personalities. But like, anyway, oh, yeah. see how that If it was go. just an East Coast Love Island and you just put a bunch of New Yorkers and New Jersey people, mm. it would be extremely entertaining. But like they've made that. And yeah, Jersey Shore, and, yeah. And I, that's, Oh, that's my least favorite thing to talk about because they make us all look so bad and none of yeah, us are yeah. like so when I was younger I was force fed to have to watch the real housewives in New Jersey so yeah I, I do empathize with that yeah. but anyway yeah um, that's my no, that's, that's, that's really, really cool listen kind of flex is a really cool guy like if suddenly he disappeared for a few months he's doing Love Island all-stars 
and it goes back to our shows and we're like, mm, sorry, why is there suddenly a completely new audience here and a completely yeah. different demographic of people? Uh, but no, listen, you're obviously you're smashed with the podcast game, but also you're involved with actual promotions as well. So like yes. obviously recently uh, you appeared in TNA. You've obviously mm-hmm. been a backstage into your women's wrestling army. How did the TNA opportunity come about? I know there's a busted open connection for a few different people involved, but like right. you're on, you're interviewing uh, the former Dana Brooke, Ashby Elegance, you're chatting with yeah. Jake, Jake something. How did those go? How did that come about? I mean, it's just so funny that they say like, you know, when it like brings it pours or like if you think something's not going, I've been wanting to do something with a big promotion for a very long time. And, you know, with things like that, you have to be patient because um, there's so many changes that happen no matter what. Like, obviously there's releases, there's hires, there's all these things happening. You could have best friends anywhere. It doesn't really matter because timing mm-hmm. is everything. And yeah, obviously with TNA, um, Tommy is a very close friend of mine, Tommy Dreamer, who's big up in TNA Bully's been there as well. And Davis kind of done some stuff. So I've been backstage with TNA, um, even just helping with some other things more than once. So I'm lucky to be very familiar with them. And, um, it just kind of worked out that they were doing that interview segment and they wanted a non, I guess, person in the company to kind of do that. And I was brought up and Tommy called me and he was like, are you available to do this? And I was like, fuck yeah, I'm available to do yeah, this. Yeah. Like, let's go. And it was cool because they were like, don't do it as like a generic interviewer, be yourself, be huh. for Gabby AF. So like, it was so much fun for me because I got to go up there and just like be me. And like, uh, Ash by elegance is just such a pleasure to work with. Like she is hilarious. Like even when we were talking beforehand, kind of going over stuff, like just ribbing off of each other. She's so talented. And I think she's playing into that character super well of like that annoying, like brat mm. and, George, her like concierge, like there are so many times where I just want to like almost pop because he was making me laugh or like I knew I was going to try to make him laugh. So like it was such a pleasure. And like I had only a couple days to really prepare for that entire segment. And um, that was my first time ever being really in front of a live crowd of that magnitude and, you know, getting the what chance, getting the like this mm-hmm. and that, like I feed into that shit. People are like, weren't you nervous? I love that because yeah. like I like being under pressure. I think I do better that way. So it was such an amazing experience. Everybody at TNA, when I tell you that locker room is like absurdly supportive Mm. and so nice. And they like genuinely care about each other and genuinely want each other to look good because they want the product to look good. Um, It was a blast. Um, I hope I can do more with them. If they're listening, I'm here. If you want to do anything else with me, hopefully in the future, we'll see a little bit more, but um, I was very happy with it. And it was, it was just cool how like one phone call can be like, okay, come here and do this. And you're like, okay. And you're just given the opportunity. You just yeah. have to like run every opportunity. That's how I feel about everything. Yeah. And like, I mean, as somebody's like listened to Busted Open and obviously your podcast as well, the fact that you like TNA is not hugely promoted here in the UK. So you kind of, you yeah. catch up on you know, Ireland as well. So you kind of, you catch up with it when you can. So then you do jump on to watch an episode. You kind of do it blindly. So you end up enjoying it a bit more without yeah. expectations. So I was watching it. I'm like shit. Okay, Gabby Lasbis is on this. How did she get this? Yeah. And then, but it wasn't like you weren't like a backstage interviewer. You're actually in the ring, so you're kind of thrown yeah. the deep end. You're talking. You're just said there, like you're only given a couple of days' notice. So these things where you've got like, I don't know, less time to think, and you kind of just do. They come across better, yeah. I think, as well. Like, so it came across really, really well and really genuine and authentic. Thank you. Thank you. And I do think that TNA. It's a shame because I think the product of TNA is so good. Like yeah. the storytelling, the wrestling. Like there's so many talented people there yeah. that. Um, I wish it was, I hope people start really taking it like a little bit more, um, serious in the big scale of things like do yeah. watch it because I also think everything they're doing with NXT right now in this kind of crossover yeah. is so good for the business. And it's so exciting. Like look at what Joe Henry just did and yeah. he broke like millions and millions of views of like for something. And this is someone with TNA. Look at what Jordan Grace just did. Like mm. there's so much room for opportunity when we just open yeah. this like I hate saying forbidden door because I think it's so corny, but like the forbidden door, like um, it's just, there's just so many talented people. And I think the better every company does, the more room there is for more wrestlers to succeed and more talents to succeed. And like, it's just, we should all be rooting for every company. So if you haven't watched Teenage, definitely watch it. It's such a good product. It really is. It's amazing. I mean, I don't want to call it forbidden door. They call it the prohibited portal or whatever people are calling it these days. (laughs) Um, But yeah, no, listen, somebody I was going to touch on in a minute, like, I've followed, say, Jordan Grace, Joe Hendry for years. They've come over here doing independence for a long time. Joe Hendry's kind of taken off recently. Um, yeah. Just kind of come into public awareness, particularly off the back of his kind of entrance song. But when he was over here beforehand, like, I thought he was when he was doing kind of individual week-by-week songs. Like, I don't know if you've seen the Drew McIntyre song he did previously, or he's got one when he was in ICW for... Um, with a guy called Lionheart. If you have time, I'd go out of your way to watch that. But how cool has that been to see like somebody 
like you've known it on a, on a personal basis, be it Jordan Grace or um, Joe Henry, that appearing on NXT and going viral, like Joe, NXT, Joe Henry got the most viewed video on WWE socials since yep. WrestleMania. Like, how cool is that for you and being part of their journey as well? I mean, I think it's just it's such a, like, you can't even say anything, just the time right now is so yeah. exciting. You know, like, like I said, I just had Joe Hendry on and like, we talked a little, of course we talked TNA, we talked NXT and this was before I, I didn't know, obviously he wouldn't tell me even if he knew at the time yeah, beforehand, yeah. but what he's doing is so different than what anybody else is doing. And I think that's why it opens the door for other people to be like, oh, that's unique. He's getting over by making his music or doing this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's not like everything else. I don't have to be like everybody else. Yeah. So I think that's kind of cool. And I like to say that about myself. I don't, there's amazing interviewers in the game. Chris Van Vliet is phenomenal at yeah. what he does. I don't want to do the same things as him. I don't want to be the same kind of interviewer because you're just recycling something that's already yeah. kind of there. Yeah. So you have to make it different. And I, yeah. that's my goal is I want people to be like, mm. oh, that's definitely a Gabby interviewer. Oh, that's definitely Gabby's podcast. Cause you know that that's how she talks or something like that. Um, and that's what Joe's doing. And on my podcast, if you haven't listened to him, I really do think you should. He really, he gets emotional. He like almost cries at one point talking about, you know, his journey and like the best yeah. moment of his life and stuff. Uh, I make people cry on my podcast. That's kind of what I do. So. Put that, put that um, in your LinkedIn profile. I make people cry. <laughs> I make all wrestlers sign a waiver that if I make you cry, you can't be mad about it. Um, no, no right. just kidding. Okay, for no, listen, like, again, like you're talking about like not, people not imitating other people. I think like anything in life, like if you're trying to be something you're not, like often you're not going to achieve much, but you're going to be miserable as well. So yeah, no, it could be, you and him could both come across hugely authentic. Um, listen, you've been incredibly giving your time. I am very conscious of that as well. And what kind of projects do you have on the horizon? Obviously, I know you've got like, Gabby AF podcast. You're appearing with Women's Wrestling Army. You've done TNA recently. You had your big WrestleMania weekend show as well. And um, what what projects do you have in the pipeline coming up now? So definitely trying to get like you just mentioned. I did my first live Gabby AF at WrestleMania. Yeah. Um, I interviewed Brandon Graham. He's um Super Bowl winner, huge player for uh Philadelphia Eagles. Yeah. I don't know if you guys watch American football as much as you watch, you know, football, international mm -hmm. football, which by the way is my number one sport. Good. So Good. This Euro, the Euro Cups are killing me. I got to watch Italy at three yeah. o'clock and I'm going to have a heart attack because okay. they did not look good against Spain and I'm not happy no. about it. But that's I, was just watching, I was watching them in JFK airport last week. They were obviously useless, but yeah. I was yelling at my television. I can't. This is, that. this gives me more anxiety than like the biggest match in WrestleMania yeah. is watching soccer. But anyway. I'm, I'm from Scotland originally and they're playing last night and they're absolutely useless. So just like an empathize. They're, yeah, they don't look great either. They're gone now, thankfully. You can all go home and enjoy the summer holidays, but Yeah. <laughs> I know. Listen, as long as England doesn't win, but you yes, know, good, is. excellent, thank you. Yes, <laughs> that's the Ireland aren't in the tournaments. So that's kind of the overriding sentiment here. As long as England, yeah, that's true. Out. Well, yeah, it's yeah. fine because we didn't even qualify for the freaking World Cup after we won the Euro Cup. So I don't even. Yeah, it yeah. is very hit or miss. They're like it's very Italian. Yeah, oh, yeah very just, Italian. I just, just went to Italy for my first time, actually. Like, oh, nice. Last month, I've never right. been to Europe or anything right. like that, and I went to Sicily because my dad's from there. So that right. was like my first taste of anything. But Ireland's like the number one place I do want to come and visit because yeah. I've heard Amazing. fun things about. It. So I, I used to live in Harlem back in 2016. Um, mm -hmm. my landlord was an incredibly Italian American man. Um, this if I ever catch up with you in person, I'll do a, a full impression. Won't do it while I'm recording this. But yeah, <laughs> this, uh, Italian American New Yorkers are far more intense than probably Italian proper Italians over here. They're a bit more chilled as well. So well, I used to They're work very in Times Square. Anytime Italy were playing or Italian oh. teams were playing, it was a different level of energy as well. I, I just, that's why I love soccer so much because there's like pubs here too. And yeah. I live in Hoboken, which is right outside New York City, yeah. but there's just a street of pubs where it's Irish and English pubs. And the days of the games, they close mm. down the street and they have like a screener and they have seats and you have to get there like early and sit there. And people are just, going insane like it's all screaming food they bring their animals they bring their children and it's just like wild and i'm like people don't understand like the love that there is for soccer yeah. like listen pro wrestling is the number one fan base in the world i will say that they're crazy but there's nothing like soccer fans there's nothing like you know these english fans that are like fighting each other at the stadiums and yeah, like yeah. i'm a barcelona fan because i love i've always loved messi okay so if i'm going international i gotta go to a barcelona game but that's just a side note. See, I get off topic very easily when I talk about things that get That's me excited. No we were talking about my podcast and I'm like, let's talk about soccer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do this on my podcast too, but I promise I'm better at it 
when I do it. So yeah. if you are thinking about listening to my podcast, I'm not usually this crazy. No, um, it's a good way to spend an hour just kind of riffing on anything. But listen, your podcast being found, you can find it on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Premier Streaming Network, absolutely everywhere. Do you have any other projects in the timeline? Any other appearances scheduled that fans keep an eye out for? Yeah, so definitely keep an eye out. I post everything on my Twitter at Gab Laspisa or follow me on Instagram as well at Gab Laspisa. Um, I'm definitely going to have some live shows coming up Amazing. very shortly this summer that I have in the works. I can't talk about yet, but um, we'll be hopefully with some big name wrestlers that I'll be interviewing and in person, which makes it such a better experience. And I will have some news about my podcast, hopefully soon about a little bit of a change of um, my home and my video and where you can watch it um, depending on subscribers and stuff like that. So keep that in mind as well. And yeah, just, just give it a listen. I, I think I'll grow on you. I think I'll grow on the on the Irish fan base if they want to give me a try. I, I love you guys, you know. Yeah, I mean, if you've got any live shows coming up, like I was, I was, I was going to su- suggest that, like with Wembley on the horizon, Cardiff show just being announced for a I'm trying. and there's that type of thing with that kind of atmosphere. You've got fans from all around Europe, and they're a bit yeah. more in tune. These wrestling fans, I think personally, having been to a lot of the WWE shows over in the UK recently, there's a AEW fan base in this part of the world would be a bit yeah. more tuned in with podcasting, YouTube streaming services. So I think yes. if, you, if you did a show around that Webley show, maybe that week off, the Thursday, Friday, I think you get a huge audience in the absolute I'm smash. trying, man. I'm trying, man. I, I swear I'm really trying. And hopefully that does come through. I've never been um, to England. Wembley would be a dream because watching it even from home last year, I was jealous that I wasn't there because yeah. it just looked like an insane atmosphere. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that's, you got to save a little bit of money. That's not just like, you know, a trip in a different state. I can't 100%. just drive there and pick it up. So we're working on it. I promise you'll be the first to know if it happens and you could tell everyone and then everyone can come out and see me because I got to make my way over to see us again. Amazing. amazing. Listen, anytime you do, you'd be more than welcome. Anytime you have a show coming up on the horizon, we'll definitely stick it up on all our social channels as part of the world as well. Gabby, listen, thank you so much for all your time today. You've been an absolute treat and a delight. I'm hopefully see you again soon. Thank you so much. This has been so much fun. I can't believe how fast it went by. So I appreciate it. Thank you so much. No problem at all. No worries. Thank you.